Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. Today's video is all about the dress code, morning coat, morning wear, morning suit, or formal day wear. This is part of a series on dress codes, and whenever you have to decipher a dress code or don't know what to wear, please come back to us and we'll help you out. So if you ever get an invitation that states morning dress or morning coat, or maybe even morning suit, here is what you wear. It's a very unique garment in the sense that it is cut away and it's called a morning coat. It is not the tail coat or the penguin, which you know from evening wear, and that's only appropriate for white tie. To learn more about evening dress codes, such as white tie or black tie, please check out our respective guides and don't forget to get the free ebook for them. Wearing a morning coat is still popular for society weddings in Europe or in England specifically for any kind of wedding, and it's mostly underutilized in the US, yet for horse races and other events, you can still wear it. If the dress code says formal day wear, it means the same thing, so you wear a morning coat ensemble. Just like black tie and white tie, the morning coat dress code is very detail oriented and I could spend an hour talking about every little detail. Here, I'll just provide you with the information in a nutshell. If you want to be dressed to a tee and look your best in morning wear, please check out our 200 plus page morning wear guide on our website here. So here's a quick rundown. You want a morning coat that is cut away in the front. It's usually in black or in dark gray. Kind of a light texture such as herringbone, but plain is okay as well. It should either have peak lapels or notch lapels, and it is worn with striped trousers. Usually they're in colors of black, charcoal, gray, and maybe a flag of white. Often they're referred to as cashmere stripe, they're the most popular. You can also go with solid pants if you want to, or small patterns such as houndstooth. Just make sure there's enough contrast to the morning coat. With the morning coat, you never wear a belt, but always suspenders. That way everything stays up. You can either wear single-breasted waistcoats or double-breasted ones. I like double-breasted ones because they go with the look of the open morning coat. They're a little more special and that's exactly the right thing when you wear such a unique garment as a morning coat. Traditional colors for the waistcoat include dove gray or buff, which is a form of Shanghai yellow. However, you can also go with maybe red or blue. It's really up to you and what style you want to set. In general, I would suggest never to have more than two different colors in a morning coat ensemble, otherwise it's not formal enough. Here, I chose a Glencheck tie, which is perfectly appropriate. You could also have a wedding tie of silver and black, and I went with a light blue boutonniere and a dark bottle green vest. Traditionally, you'd wear a white detachable wing collar with a ascot, a formal ascot, that you could either tie just like a cravat or in a typical formal ascot style with a tie pin. I teach you more about how to do that in these videos here. It's very difficult to find these formal ascots, however, it's really fun to wear it, especially if you like a vintage look or the most traditional of all looks, and you can find a selection of them in our shop here. If you want to go with a necktie, the most classic choice is silver and black tones. They're also called wedding ties, and again, we have a rich selection of them here. Of course, when you go with a tie, a regular turn-down collar shirt with French cuffs is ideal. Button cuffs are always too informal, so make sure you can wear cufflinks with it. Other than a formal ascot or regular tie, you can also go with a bow tie. Again, the same kind of patterns in silver and black are good. If you want to be over the top loud, you can also go with something more colorful. For a full selection of wedding bow ties and regular bow ties, as well as regular ties and wedding ties, please check out our shop here. If you want to wear shoes, I suggest you go with plain black shoes, such as black cap to Oxfords. You can also go with Balmoral boots. And ideally, you want to have something with a contrasting insert, maybe in suede or fabric, or it can all be in black. If you want to have a very traditional look, you can also go with button boots made out of black leather and then a contrasting colored insert. No matter what footwear you choose, go with dark socks that work with the color of your pants. You can either go with solid gray or charcoal, ideally with some clocks on the side that's very formal, very nice, very appropriate for morning dress, and you can find a selection of those in our shop here. Of course, shadow stripe socks in dark gray and light gray work just as well. You definitely want a white linen pocket square because very classic and dapper, as well as a boutonniere. 
either a fresh one, or if you can't get that, you can find a selection of them in our shop. It's not obligatory to wear a hat anymore, but if you go with that special dress code, you might as well go all in and get out the top hat. Keep in mind, long tails also require a top hat. A regular fedora or a Hamburg hat would be wrong. Chances are you'll never see the dress code morning suit, but if you do, it means that your waistcoat, your coat, as well as your pants are made out of the same fabric. Personally, I don't own a morning suit and they're really not necessary. It's just for people who attend morning wear events regularly and want to be special in a subtle, unique way. If you've ever seen a dress code day wear or formal day wear, it's the equivalent of evening wear or formal evening wear. So for white tie, the equivalent is the morning coat. For the black tie, the equivalent is the stroller suit, also known as the Stresemann in Europe. In order to get the Stresemann look, all I have to do is simply to swap out the regular morning coat for a black jacket. It's typically single-breasted with peak lapels with one or two closing buttons, no flaps, but jetted pockets, and it's a less flashy version because it's still a regular suit jacket, but it's still quite formal and you can wear it as a groom to your own wedding or as a guest because it's formal without being over the top and stealing the show from the bride and groom. In today's video, I'm wearing a traditional morning coat made in England with peak lapels. It has a very dark charcoal color in a herringbone weave. I combined it with a velvet double-breasted vest and peak lapels. It's very high closing and it works quite well with the white collar of my shirt, as well as the white shirt body and the small glencheck tie that is typical for morning wear ensembles as well as business outfits. So if you buy this tie, you can wear it to any kind of evening event or business event and you'll never be out of place. So it's a good investment. The boutonniere is light blue, so it's slightly different than the white pocket square, yet it all looks harmonious. My trousers are vintage and cashmere striped in black and charcoal, and my boots are black Balmoral boots in black and suede leather with gray contrasting shoelaces, which you also can find in our shop here. It's a very subtle way to add a bit of contrast to an otherwise very black footwear outfit. My socks are gray with clocks from Fort Belvedere, over the calf, of course, and you can find them in our shop here. Of course, I also wear a top hat with it, just so it looks very dapper, and I could also go with unlined suede gloves in our chamois yellow, maybe gray, or something like red or blue if I wanted to be a little more bold. Of course, if I wanted a stroller suit or a Stresemann, I could just swap out the jacket and it would be less unique of an outfit, so I would catch less attention. Nevertheless, my dress code would be perfectly appropriate for day wear. <laughs>